so uh, welcome everyone i am writing here it is that p of minus 1 1 1 This is equal to. First, uh, we will apply this t given t is given here. So this will be zero x one plus x two. X two plus x three is two. And then here we have uh, one and minus one. Then again, it is zero. So we want to uh, write it as a linear combination of. this uh, new basis this is let's say this is b2 only so how we write it x1 plus uh, sorry into minus 1 1 1 plus x2 1 minus 1 0 so uh, they are asking matrix representation with respect to b2 b1 so that is why I am calculating T of this is let's say W one, W two, W three, W one. T of W one is a linear combination of uh, W one and W two and W three. So here I am writing x three uh, in bracket minus one zero zero. So we want to calculate x one, x two, x three, and then that matrix will be matrix A will be first column will be x one, x two, x three. So let calculate here. So minus x one plus x two. Here we have minus minus x three is equal to zero. Second equation will be uh, we are equating this with coordinate wise. Okay. So x one minus x two x three zero x three is equal to two, right? And third equation will be Just x one is equal to zero. So using these three, uh, we get x one is equal to zero. Then x two is equal to put here. Uh, x two is equal to minus two, right? And put x one, x two both in first equation here. Then x three will be equal to x one is already zero. X two is Minus two, then x three will be plus two, two. right? Two. X three will be two plus two, yes. Minus two, sir. Minus two or plus two? Let's see. Minus two, minus two. Yes, yes. X x yeah, two is yeah. minus two, so minus, x three is minus, minus two only. So first column is we are getting here zero minus two minus two. Okay. Let calculate second. Second, this was for first column. Second will be t of second basis vector is one minus one zero. So this is equal to as we are zero here. We are adding these two. Then minus one, adding second two. Then coordinate will be x three plus x one, which is just one. Here we write let's say y one y y one of minus one 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 plus y two one minus one zero plus y three minus one zero zero okay so the second column will be y one y two y three so first of all either a is true or c is true. Because first column is matching in both cases. Okay. So uh, first equation here we have minus y one plus y two minus y three is equal to zero, and then second equation is y one minus y two is equal to uh, minus one. Third equation will be y one is equal to one. So put y one is equal to one here, then we get y two is equal to 
ऑप्शन ए इज करेक्ट we we should check third column as well or i am leaving check because this is uh, this kind of questions basically if you want to solve them it how oh, okay one minute it might happen that all the answer is incorrect so let's see third it should not happen but it might happen some time ki all option are incorrect so third vector we have minus 1 0 0 while applying t we'll get minus 1 0 minus 1 okay okay so it is let's say that one minus 1 1 1 plus z2 1 minus 1 0 plus z3 minus 1 0 0 so we have three equation here as well z1 minus z1 plus z2 minus z3 is equal to minus 1 z1 minus z2 is equal to 0 z1 is equal to sorry minus z1 here minus z1 and is it not here right Plus z, sorry, z one is equal to minus one. So from here we get z two is equal to z one. Second equation implies z two is equal to z one is equal to minus one. And because z one and z two are equal, so this this term will be zero. So z three is equal to one. So last column should be minus one, minus one, one. let's see if a is so let's see we are getting wrong things right all options are incorrect let let's see once more p of a uh, third third column third basis vector is minus 1 0 what first coordinate will be addition of first two is it is minus 1 This is last two. This is first and last. X three plus X one. So this is good. Now we have these three equation as usual. But here we have minus one zero minus one. So Z one is equal to minus one. Z two is equal to Z two. Z one is equal to Z two. Okay. So we have minus one minus one. Okay, so no option is correct. I'm wrong. Sorry. This is incorrect. This is all incorrect. Okay, Sorry, this can that, have. In that, in that case, how can we choose uh, which option is correct? How can we choose? Okay, so in if this is the case, uh, this question will not be evaluated. Okay. Last time, uh, it. this type of things happen some some in some questions so those those questions were out of evaluation so let's see in the second second question they are asking uh, which of the following matrix is or similar to this one 
so first of all uh, similar matrices have uh, same determinant right i am i am going to solve this question by the that rule which is still not discussed maybe in the next week or next to next week this will be discussed that similar matrices have same minimal polynomial same minimal polynomial in uh, same characteristic polynomial and if characteristic polynomial uh, okay if they have same characteristic polynomial two matrices they have same determinant also because constant term in both the polynomials characteristic polynomials which is monic constant term is same and that constant term in the characteristic polynomial is happen to be the determinant of that matrix so i'm going to solve this by that idea so determinant of this given matrix determinant of e of i theta 0 to power minus i theta 0 this matrix is equal to what it it, it will be e power 0 which is 1 right so let's see what is determinant of first i was looking if i can get uh, some p exactly p p a p inverse a p is equal to this matrix our matrix e power i theta uh, i think 0 is correct uh -huh. minus i theta so i failed to find this p uh, because i am weak in little bit in calculations so okay uh, let's say b is correct someone is saying let yes, verify sir, b is correct because determinant as yeah determinant of a is zero in first right in b we have d a is equal to one what about c c may we have minus cos two theta d a is equal to this and last d we have cos two theta this is your d a so only b satisfies our choice um okay so this this question uh, that similar matrices have same determinant similar matrices have yeah. same rank similar matrices have same uh, characteristic polynomial uh, this probably this should be discussed in uh, next week okay uh, i don't know but it will it should be discussed okay so let go to third question pb space of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 is this order basis px is a, this polynomial db differentiation operator operator then if this is the condition p is given is the order basis so how to get uh, if p is given so how to get this new basis order basis if you remember uh, in the second lecture it was discussed right the order basis would be that 1 x x square multiplied with this matrix whatever this p is right minus 1 2 0 0 3 4 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 
M cross N. Yes, yes, M cross N. M cross N, sorry. So in that case, uh, getting getting this uh, new basis was simpler. Uh, like there it was. Here it is like this. This multiplied thing. And in on, in that case, in the other case, it was like just a x transpose here. Then all the columns were the basis. But here, because this is not in matrix representation, so here we have this. And what it will be? First column will be. Sorry, this is row. This is not tuple. This is a row matrix, uh, which is one cross three. This is three cross three. So this will become first column will become minus one, which is good. This is your first basis vector. Second will be two two plus three x. This is your second basis vector. Third basis vector is four x plus this square. Okay. So this is also discussed. This this idea is discussed in second lecture. Okay, matrix representation in the second lecture. If you see, you will see this. So A is correct here. A is correct. Right? Yes. So I'm going to next question. Uh, check it once more. Okay. How this was done? This bracket thing. Getting basis. Uh, if you are having this P, you can get ba new basis. If you have new basis, you can get that P. P is nothing but uh, base change matrix. Okay. Okay, so let's go to next question. So T B a linear operator in R three given by this. Okay, B is this matrix. Then which of the following statement is or correct? So we want to get a matrix representation for T with respect to B basis. So uh, let's see what should be the first column. T of one minus one one. You say let's say x one one minus one one plus x two minus one 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 plus x three one one one. So we want to get a first column. So first column will be here x one x two x three. But let's see we want to calculate x one x two x three. So we have three equation x1 minus x2 plus x3 is equal to okay here we have t of 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 0 right this is what how t is defined so we get one here first coordinate you first equation second coordinates minus x1 plus x2 plus x3 this gives minus one second coordinate compare then third coordinate will be x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to zero okay so add first these two equations so they will imply x3 is equal to zero right because x1 get cancelled with x1, x2 get cancelled with x2, 2x3 is equal to your right side we will 0. So x3 is equal to 0. Okay, x3 is 0, then put everywhere 0. Then we have x1 plus x2 is equal to 0 from third equation. 
these two things will imply this and this will imply x1 is equal to minus x2 so put in first equation first equation says x1 minus x2 is equal to 1 so using this relation we get minus x2 minus x2 is equal to 1 so x2 is equal to minus 1 by 2 so x1 is equal to 1 by 2 using this and x3 is equal to we have already 0 so uh, what should be the first column let's say we are writing a matrix here somewhere in this space 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 here we have 0 okay so <clears throat> a second basis vector we have p of minus 1 1 1 and this will be minus 1 1 0 this that t is projection into first two coordinates that coordinate is getting 0 so what about this matrix so it has equation like similar equation x1 minus x2 plus x3 but this side we have now minus 1 minus x1 uh, my plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 1 and last x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0 so from here we again have x3 is equal to 0 add them first two equation and x3 will become 0 and this will this will imply x1 is equal to minus 2 similar to this idea but what will be x1 here let's see we are putting in first equation first equation implies x1 minus x2 is equal to minus 1 so minus x2 minus x2 is equal to minus 1 this will by x2 is equal to 1 by 2 okay minus minus get cancelled from both sides okay then 2 goes to denominator on the right side right hand side okay so x1 will become x1 is equal to minus 1 by 2 and x3 is already 0 so all these relations second second column will be minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 and here we have 0 again so let's see what about third column there we have similar calculation uh, last equation is again because t of 1 1 1 this is equal to 1 1 0 so last equation is again same x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0 first equation will become x1 minus x2 plus x3 is equal to 1 x minus x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 1 so this time we we want to calculate here we have 2 x3 this side we have 2 addition of first two equation will imply this so x3 is equal to 1 so x1 plus x2 is equal to minus 1 from third equation this will imply this putting x3 since x3 is equal to 1 okay let's say we are we want to calculate x1 and x2 now so from first equation what we have x1 minus x2 plus 1 is equal to 1 right this is your first equation okay again then let's say star star implies this then x1 minus x2 equal to 0 right this implies x1 equal to x2 and so we get x1 is equal to x2 then uh, x1 and x2 both are minus 1 by 2 from here 
right so last column is minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 and here we have 1 let's see which any script so we have third option is same first option is same in the second option we have minus at first here this option is correct so two fields now what about t square t sends a b c to only third coordinate is becoming zero nothing happens to first two coordinates again you if you apply t what will happen first coordinate nothing changes third coordinate it was already zero so no need to change this is so even if you apply three times nothing happens a b zero okay so t q is equal to t only because t sends a b c to a b zero and t q also sends a b so a b a b c to a b zero so this is your t q so this option is correct but this is incorrect okay good understood Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm going to next question, fifth question. This is your t t of a b is equal to zero for a zero. The linear operator on C two. B one be this basis, a standard basis. C two be this basis, two ordered basis. Then t of P one. Let the of A B one is representation of A B with respect. It is X one. It is X two. Question is nothing asked about X one X two. So no need to worry about that. Ah, uh, let's see. First of all, we want to calculate E B two because question is asked about E B two. So we will check. This one comma i, what is x one for x one? One comma i plus x two minus i comma two and t of minus i comma two is equal to y one one comma i plus y two minus i comma two. So your matrix representation of t b two. Is nothing but this x one, x two is your first column, and y one, y two is second column. So let calculate what is x one, x two. So uh, t of one comma i is one comma zero. Okay, from this uh, definition, t of minus i comma two. This is minus i comma zero. Okay. Okay. So. First equation says x one minus i x two is equal to one, and i x one plus two x two is equal to zero. From here, we want to calculate values of x one and x two. Okay. <clears throat> so do one thing: multiply by I in the first equation, okay. Then subtract from second. So what will happen? Uh, I x I I x one I x one get cancelled, and here we have one. Okay, let me write here. I x one plus x two is equal to right side we have I. Here we have already i x one plus two x two and minus one by two. Yes. Okay, one minute. Let me write. Uh, so we have subtracting from here. We get x two is equal to minus i, right? X two is equal to minus i. Yeah. 
plus here minus here yes okay yes yes okay so x2 is equal to minus i then x1 is equal to from here this will imply x1 is equal to 1 plus i x2 and this is equal to 1 plus i minus i this is 2 okay because because of this formula i square is equal to minus 1 so minus i square yes. will be plus Mm -hmm. Okay, so first column we, we are getting x2 is equal to minus i here and here x1 is equal to 2. Okay, this is possibly true. Uh, if let's say we are we want to calculate second also. Okay, so in the second we have this equation y1 minus i y2 is equal to right side we are having minus i because of this minus i okay as coordinate second one i y1 plus 2 y2 is equal to 0 again so this time if you multiply by i in the first equation and then subtract so what will happen right side here in the place uh, in this place you are getting here again it, it will be just y2 here we will getting we will be getting plus one right or minus one minus one okay uh, let's say we want to calculate it i y1 plus y2 i y1 plus 2 y2 is equal to 0 here is equal to 1 here now you want to subtract y2 is equal to plus sorry y2 is equal to minus 1 yes yes so y2 is equal to minus 1 then y1 is equal to y1 is equal to minus i plus i y2 this will become minus i plus i y2 is equal to minus 1 so this is minus 2i so this is correct t option is correct uh -huh. let's see this only one option is correct they are not saying anything if only one option is correct or so we have not checked about this thing okay let's see we want t b1 and b2 so what is b1 b1 is a standard basis good it is easy to calculate p of 1 comma i is equal to in coordinate is getting 1 comma 0 and this is 1 e1 a standard basis which is b b1 0 e2 your first column is nothing but 1 comma 0 so e p 2 b1 this is just first column we are getting 1 comma 0 so let's calculate the minus i comma 2 i minus i comma 2 right this is just minus i comma 0 and here we have minus i e1 plus 0 e2 so second column should be minus i 0 let's see if it is matching with some so if it okay it fails here we are having plus i here we are having plus i and we are getting minus i so both fails this both are incorrect this is anyway correct incorrect we got this one Everyone understood na? this question. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, let's see next question. The next question. This is they are asking dual basis of given basis. 
so if you don't know uh, write it randomly f1 of f1 is some linear function on c3 right so on c3 hai to f1 of x1 x2 x3 this will be given by linear equation okay so this is let's say c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus c3 x3 similarly f1 f2 f3 every the phi is of this form but if you want to find dual basis then what should happen let's say it is your e1 e2 e3 f1 of e1 should be 1 f1 of e2 should be 0 f1 of e3 should be again 0 and f2 of e2, e1 should be 0 f2 of e2 should be 1 f2 of e3 should be 0 similarly third equation okay which is a uh, saying f3 of e1 is equal to 0 f3 of e2 is equal to 0 f3 of e3 is equal to 1 okay we have long face you can check at least for f1 what kind of f1 is so f1 e1 is equal to 1 so we have this equation e1 what is x1 here 1 here okay uh, c1 minus c3 is equal to 0 because we are putting uh, values of x1 x2 x3 which is for e1 is just 1 0 minus 1 so let's say this is your i dual 1 2 3 so this is for first part even uh, for the second second will imply okay here i should write one okay understood why f1 of e1 is we want to evaluate is, is equal to one and in the second if you apply f f1 to e2 it will just one 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 so we have c1 plus c2 plus c3 but it should be equal to zero because of this evaluation and last equation will be equal to 2c1 plus 2c2 is equal to zero so from here from third equation you have c1 plus c2 is equal to zero put into second and get e1 is equal to, sorry c3 is equal to also zero okay this will imply this now c3 is equal to 0 so from first equation you get uh, first equation will imply c1 is equal to 1 now uh, what will be c2 from second equation or last equation c2 will be minus 1 so you are getting uh, f1 f1 is nothing but given by uh, f1 of a b c this is given by c1 constant c1 is given plus 1 so here we are getting just a here we are getting in the second c2 is minus 1 so minus b for c3 we have 0 so no c is coming so f1 of abc is given like this a minus b so we have these two choices a or c right these two are incorrect so let's calculate f2 and then we are done because f2 will decide which one is correct or incorrect okay uh, this is similar condition let's say i'm not going to change constant c1 c2 c3 okay let's say change d1 d2 d3 this term we are writing 
तो डी वन माइनस टी थ्री इज इक्वल टू फर्स्ट इक्वेशन वी आर इवेल्यूटिंग जीरो सेकेंड विल इंप्लाई डी वन प्लस डी टू प्लस डी थ्री इज इक्वल टू वन थर्ड विल इंप्लाई टू डी वन प्लस टू डी टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो अगेन सो दिस इज फॉर सेकेंड दिस टाइम वी आर गेटिंग डी वन इज इक्वल टू टी थ्री दिस टाइम वी आर गेटिंग डी वन इज इक्वल टू डी थ्री गुड सो फ्रॉम हियर वी गेट डी वन प्लस डी टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो Now this equation and this equation, these two both he will imply. T three is equal to one because T one is equal to T three, so we get this will imply. T one is equal to T three is equal to one. So D two will be equal to this last equation again. Imply T two is equal to minus one. So we get uh, f two of a b c. This f two linear functional. This is given like first coordinate is plus, last coordinate is plus, second coordinate is minus. So given like this, a minus b plus c. So we are not going to calculate f three, but because uh, you should check f three also. Okay. But f three is same in both, so no need to calculate for that. A is correct because a minus b plus c. Okay, understood. Okay. Everyone understood, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. I don't know what happened. My screen is like this. Sir, we enlarge it. Ah, uh, I don't know how it will happen. It happened before also. Okay. Uh, Make a double click on the page, sir. One minute. My screen is totally jam. Okay. This is now horizontal, working horizontally. Okay. Question five, question six. We are in question seven. Right click. No sir, left click. Double click. Okay. But left double click is not working. So 
So let me do like this only, yeah. Uh, let let me write here in seventh question. Sir, you can easy. represent. You can try to represent. Okay. Should I close this? Yes. I think I should close. It. But after it, I will open. It might open similar thing. It is visible, na? No? Control plus, not it's working. Very small, sir. Very small. Very small. This layout. This layout will work. Go to page layout and the single page you make. What happened? Uh, I'm so sorry. What is happening? Control Z. Every question came to me. Okay, sir. Leave that. We can do it in size. I will. Three. Okay, re-edit it and we'll send to you. Uh, question seven is visible, right? Question seven, this. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, so I'm yes, writing sir. here. My man. Uh, let me close this, huh? Then we'll open once more. I suppose uh, nothing has been lost. My screen is visible, right? Yes, sir. But only white, white screen is visible. Okay. Stop sharing, sir. Let me share once more. My pen is not working. Okay. Uh, let me open another uh, document where I will write questions and solve because we have still one hour left. So I'm op opening a blank document and then we'll restart from the same, same place.
you can see this presentation right powerpoint presentation blank page Okay. So let me restart from the same place. What was last question? Question number seven. Question number seven, right? Question number seven is the uh, space of R four, which is spanned by two vectors. And then linear functional such that this happens is zero. Okay. Control E. Control B. Okay, here. Okay, it is coming. Question number seven is like this. The blue B the subspace of R4. Which is spanned by these two vectors, then the linear functional, which is of this form, such that such that uh, these two vectors are actually or W is uh, in the null space of it. Okay, then. Here it is. Then uh, as this condition holds. F belongs to W annihilator. So what uh, should be that condition? So let let's check that. Okay. So uh, every vector in W will vanish if f of if that vanish on basis, right? F of W is equal to nothing but uh, some alpha one w one plus alpha two w two uh, applied f f applied to it and that will be alpha one f of w one plus alpha two f of w two so we want to just check when alpha of sorry f of w one and f of w two n is then they will vanish on whole of w one okay so just applied these two conditions uh, f of one Zero minus one, two. This should be zero. But this is equal to c one plus minus c three plus two c four. C four. Okay. And second condition will be uh, saying f of two three one one, and this is equal to c one plus c c two plus uh, C three plus C four, okay. Okay, first first equation will imply C one is equal to C three minus two C four, right? First equation will imply this. So C three minus two C four, C three minus two C four. These two are incorrect. Okay. So uh, second condition will imply what is value of C two. Okay, let's calculate this. Two put value of C one, which is C three minus two C four plus three C two plus C three plus C four equal to zero. This is your second equation. Uh, but in place of C one, we put this this quantity. Okay. So uh, what we are getting here is 
2c3 plus c3 we are getting c 3c3 and here we are getting minus 4 c4 and plus c4 is uh, minus 3 c4 right right now what left is this because c3 is already on here plus the 3 c2 is equal to 0 but this will imply 3 is common okay c2 is equal to c3 will be in minus c4 is plus c4 minus c3 right okay you understood then i can go to next question which option is correct C C is correct yes yes okay so i'm going to next question but i have to copy first question number eight oh. You can see it, right? Let me read it for you. Which of the following statement is or correct? If W is subspace of R4, sorry, R7, dimension of W is 3, then W is intersection of three hypersurfaces of R7. So this question is asking about if W is intersection of three hypersurfaces. Someone wants to reply for it, or I should do this. Just to explain, hyperspace is meaningful. Okay, so hypersurface actually is a kernel of a linear functional, or I should say, any if. Uh, Six dimensional space, okay. Some space of R7 that is called hyperplane or hypersurface uh, because of our convention. All linear subspaces, spaces, which is of co dimension one, or I should say n minus one dimensional, they are hypersurfaces, okay. So once, once you take uh, a hypersurface, dimension decreases by one. So initially, if it was R7 and one hypersurface will be of dimension 6 dimensional. Okay. If you once intersect, uh, intersection, taking intersection of this, let's say this is your given by F1. Okay. This is kernel of some linear functional F1. So this is your 6 dimensional space. Now you intersect with uh, some F2, which is which is again a linear functional on all of R7. But if you take intersection, it will be of dimension 5. Okay. Because we are getting every time uh, dimension 1 less. So uh, the, the role playing R7 here now plays this 6 dimensional space. Let's say it is W1. So if you take F2, which is linear functional or W1, then this will be of dimension 5. So next, this was your W2. Same, same thing. If you apply uh, F3, intersect with F3, uh, this is of four dimensional. This is your W3 in third step. Okay. So uh, if you have hypersurfaces, three hypersurfaces, which are distinct, in so at least dimension uh, will be less than uh, much of less than or equal sorry greater than or equal to four. Uh, this might happen that w one equal to w two w three. This 
this will not happen if f1 and f2 are totally linearly independent okay f1 f2 are linearly independent then dimension will be one less so this fails first option is incorrect every hypersurface is null space of a linear function this is definition in the class equalization okay why it is of n minus 1 dimensional because f was a linear function from p to f and this field field is itself is uh, one dimensional okay f1 so what will be the kernel rank null t theorem dimension of p kernel f dimension of this equal to dimension of p minus uh, dimension of image image set so f is non zero if f is non zero then it will be of one dimension because range will be whole of f1 okay because f1 has only zero and f1 itself has subspaces so range will be subspace so either it is zero or f1 in that case if f is non zero then dimension of kernel f is equal to n minus 1 if n is dimension of p so this was discussed in the class if w is sub i'm talking about third option now if w is service space of r7 such that dimension of w is 3 then w is intersection of four hyper surfaces This is correct, but how should we get that four hyper surfaces, right? How should we get them? Okay, I'm saying this option is correct. Let's say W ka basis, uh, basis of W, we have this three dimensional, okay, E1, E2, E3. It's your basis of W. We can extend to a basis of the basis of V, which is equal to E1, E2, E3. Some uh, let's say E4, E5, and so on, En, whatever N is to that. This is your basis of. Uh, v now think about these things e e four is equal to zero. This is one hypersurface e five is equal to zero e e six is equal to zero e seven is equal to zero okay n is equal to seven here so let me write here so these four hypersurfaces if you Evaluate them is equal to zero. This is E4 itself is linear functional, which is uh, talking about fourth coordinate. Okay, this is basis. Then uh, any V can be written as alpha i e i. Then I'm talking about this uh, f of V is equal to alpha four. This this map this which is about projection onto fourth coordinate f four I am talking so this is also a hypersurface this hypersurface and if you take intersection all these coordinates become zero the only thing that left is e one e two e three which are spanning so intersection of these four hypersurfaces is this so c is correct. What about D? D is nothing but uh, first option, so it is incorrect. Intersection of null spaces of three linear function and three hypersurfaces of R7, they are same. Null space of linear functional hypersurface in R7. So <laughs> I suppose it is understood. Okay. If you have doubt, you can ask.
सी ऑप्शन का नहीं ओके तो इन द सी ऑप्शन वी हैव डब्ल्यू व्हिच इज ऑफ डायमेंशन 3 ओके आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस इज नॉट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट स्टैंडर्ड बेसिस दिस इज सम थ्री वेक्टर्स e1 e2 e3 व्हिच इज स्पैन w3 सॉरी w ओके e1 e2 e3 इज बेसिस ऑफ w ओके अंडरस्टूड गुड so uh, we can extend to a basis of v even e2 e3 we are adding this core element extra e4 e5 e6 e7 now at these hypersurfaces e4 is equal to 0 which is first hypersurface this correspond to e4 which is your f4 5 is equal to e5 okay what i'm doing is uh, this is your f4 here explicitly it is f4 of v f4 is function of v2 f field f so it is projection onto fourth coordinate if we can be written as summation alpha v i then f4 of v is equal to alpha 4 so this is one hypersurface similarly define f5 uh, f6 f7 now what will be the intersection of kernels that will say that all the coordinates this alpha 4 alpha 5 alpha 6 alpha 7 they are zero in this expression right if all alpha 4 alpha 5 alpha 6 alpha 7 are zero then only first three coordinates are left alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 and the uh, they are spanning w only because e1 e2 e3 is species of w so what is intersection intersection of this kernel of f5 intersection of kernel fi yeah i i should say hypersurfaces i from 4 to 7 this is nothing but w okay understood okay okay good so let's go to next question question number 9 let me copy first is this visible it's very small sir very small is your t of it is visible right now yes okay so let do this w is a space of r5 w is a space of r5 is spanned by these vectors on 
alpha 2 alpha 1 alpha 3 and alpha 4 you have only three vectors okay so uh, let w not be basis f1 f2 in which of the following is correct right side part is not visible sir that's why there is incomplete question oh sorry sorry uh, oh sorry <laughs> because of this the option Sorry for that. I saw, I thought this is alpha 2. Okay, so uh, what is the mention of the blue? It is not given, but the mention of W naught, because this is given, let basis of W naught be these two vectors. So you have this theorem, right? A dimension of W plus dimension of W naught, which is any letter of W. This is equal to dimension of V. V, v is R5, so it is 5. So dimension of W is equal to 5 minus dimension of V0 is 3, so it is 2. Sorry, 2, so it is 3. Okay. So I suppose these four vectors are linearly dependent. So they only three vectors will be enough to get a basis of the proof. The question is asked about dimension of W is equal to 2. No, dimension of W is equal to 3. A fails. OK. So next question is about what is F1 and F2? Means what are F1 and F2? So calculate F1. So F1, uh, F1 means, sorry, F1 should annihilate all the uh, alpha is, means F1 of all alpha is, this should be 0. Similarly, F2 of all alpha is, this should be 0, right? Because F1 and F2 are annihilated in the annihilator of W. So, an alpha is generate W. So, F1 should vanish in generating set. So F1 will vanish on whole W. So this is the idea. Now it is easier to calculate. So F1 is, is this true or not? C. So let verify. X1 minus X2 should be 0. So evaluate at this point. X1 minus X2. This will be 4. So this fails. I am saying F1. If if it is F1, F1 related to minus 2, 3, 4, minus 1. If 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 it's this, this is what C, then this will be 2 plus 2, and this will be 4, and this is not 0. So this C fails. Okay. Uh, in B, we have F1 is equal to X1 plus X2. Here also we have x1 plus x2. So both may be correct. But we will check about what about f2. So see everywhere has two coordinate. If you add them, has two coordinate, they are equal to 0. 2 minus 2, minus 1 plus 1, 0 plus 0, 1 minus 1. So x1 plus x2 annihilate everything. What about f2? F2 annihilates or not? Let's verify first for B. X1 plus X4 minus 2X3. Okay. X1 plus X4 minus 2X3. X1 plus X4 is 6 here. Minus 2X3. 3 is 6. So for B option I am writing. F1 of. Sorry F2 of. Alpha 1 is equal to 2 plus 4 minus 2 into 3, matlab 6. So this is 0. Now F2 of alpha 2, if you take uh, F2 of alpha 2, add them, you will get 4. 
and minus two into two means minus four. This is again zero. F two of alpha three. Uh, add these two first and fourth coordinate, and then minus two multiply them. Addition will be minus two only. And if you multiply by minus two here, so it will be the plus two. So it is zero again. Here in this case, three and four becomes one. Is f two of alpha four is equal to addition will be four first and fourth coordinate and minus minus two into these two. Will become minus four. So this is zero again. So this is correct. F one F F two vanishes on all four coordinates. Sorry, all four base uh, generating set of W. So F one F two belongs to W naught, and because they are linearly independent, okay, they are linearly independent. So this will form a basis. What about this one? F two. Let's say we are evaluating at uh, f this f two at uh, alpha one. What will we get? X one plus x four, which is six, plus two x three. Two x three means just three here. Two three means six. This addition will be two. This is not zero. So this is this f two does not belong to W annihilator. So how it can be H six, right? So this is wrong. Uh, any doubt here? No sir. No doubt. Okay. So we are going to see next question in next phase. Let me copy the question. So uh, this is our tenth question. At V B, if the space of polynomials degree less than equal to two, V B this general polynomial. F one is integration from zero to one. F two is integration from zero to two. And F three is from zero to minus two. These are all linear, uh, linear functional because we will get some constant after evaluation. If you put limit uh, after this integration, if you put limit, it will be a constant, and that will lie in field. So these are all integration is linear. So These are all linear functionals. So f one, f two, f three is dual basis. So it is uh, already a basis. F one, f two, f three is basis of R three. Sorry, of of B linear functional of B is this. Okay. The dual basis is p1, p2, p3. Then we want to calculate p1, p2, p3. Okay. So uh, let's say p1 is equal to c1 or c0 plus c1x plus c2 x square. P2 is equal to d0 plus d1 x plus d2 x square. P3 is equal to. Uh, E zero plus e one x plus e two x square. Ah, uh, because we have less space, we'll calculate one or two, and I suppose answer will be there. Okay. So if you put uh, okay. So f i, because p i this p i set is dual basis, so f i p j is equal to. डेल्टा आई है, क्रोनिकल डेल्टा। ओके, सो लेट्स सेवियर अप्लाइंग इन फर्स्ट कंडीशन। 
the f1 p1 is equal to 1 so here we write 1 here f1 p1 but f1 applied to p1 is just p1 here and integration from 0 to 1 now here it is equal to p naught x plus c1 x plus c2 x square something down here x square by 2 x cube by 3 now put limit from 0 to 1 and we are getting this equal to c0 plus c1 by 2 plus c3 sorry c2 by 3 okay other equations are 1 e2 x will be equal to again integration will be same but limit is different okay i'm just writing this c0 plus c1 x square by 2 plus c2 x cube by 3 limit 0 to 2 right sorry 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 what i want f1 p1 now we are calculating f1 p2 well, p2 is p1 sorry here we have again same limit but here we have coefficients uh, di so similar equation of this form p0 sorry d0 plus d1 by 2 plus d2 by 3 is equal to 0 okay so uh, you get this kind of matrix if you apply f f2 uh, integration will be something okay excuse me sir limit is 0 to 2 isn't it we are calculating f1 but at p2 p2 is this f1 means uh, integration from 0 to 1 only okay this kind of all equation uh, you get if you want to calculate c0 c1 c2 you should get a inverse you know for c is you have equation like 1 1 0 0 okay then, then you will get c1 c2 c3 what is a a is this matrix Uh, from here you have 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3. Second column is uh, C1, F2 at P1. F2, P1. Then you, you will get this. Limit is from 0 to 2. So 2 C2. And 2 square by 2 means you will get 2 C1. plus here you have x cube by 3 so you will get 8 c2 by 3 so second column is this 2 2 8 by 3 this is your a matrix i'm writing so last column will be depending on f3 f1 this will become minus 2 right minus 2 0 to minus 2 if you will write so minus 2 c0 plus because here x square by 2 we have so this is just 2 square by 2 means 2 c1 last may x cube by 3 you coefficients you have minus 2 putting at x you will get minus 8 by 3 c2 so here we have minus 2 2 and these are all 0 because f1 sorry yes these are all 0 so here you have last minus 8 by 3 evaluated at c1 so c0 c1 c2 this is equal to the first equation is 1 everything else is 0 so you have such a matrix a into this column c this is your just ax equal to 1 0 0 so if you want to calculate c0 c1 c2 so send a inverse on the other side uh, because 
I don't want to do this calculation. I leave it. Okay. So, uh, how about D1, D0, D1, D2? Similarly, if you want to calculate D0, D1, D2, you should calculate this A inverse that 0, 1, 0. Because in that case, second equation, second equation will be uh, evaluating getting equal to 1. F2 of E2 is equal to 1 and everything else is 0. So, D0, D1, D2, calculate like this. Okay. So, I'm leaving this. Do this. I suppose you can do this. To find the answer, I should do this. If you calculate with me, if inverse I'm getting wrong, you should correct me. Then I can do this. Otherwise, I'm leaving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry for that. Next problem. Same problem. We will together do. Okay, so we are there. Okay, good. So let's write here a is equal to 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 2, 2, 8 by 3. Here we have minus 2, 2, minus 8 by 3. So first we we want to calculate inverse of a. So a inverse is equal to a dj by determinant a. What is determinant? Determinant a is equal to 1 minus 16 by 3 minus 16 by 3 minus 1 by 2 minus 16 by 3 plus 16 by 3 plus 1 by 3 2 into 2 means 4 minus and it becomes plus 2 into 2 4 this is this is your determinant because this is 0 the so second term is not there first one is minus minus add this so it will be 16 32 by 3 and here we have plus 4 4 8 by 3 so it becomes minus 24 by 3 this is minus 8. So determinant is minus 8. Now uh, a is a. Here we have a11, a12, like this, a21, a21, a dj is like this, where a11 is calculated. If you leave this row and this column. From here, you will get a11. What it will be? Let let calculate. This is minus 32 by 3. Here you have you should take sign accordingly. Here we had taken plus. Here we will get minus. So it will be equal to. minus minus plus we are getting zero this last one two to eight but because of plus if it's plus so if you want to calculate next row leave this minus eight right. here we should get minus minus eight by sorry one minute i'm leaving let me use other color so that after some time we'll remove this we want to remove this row and this color so we will get minus eight by six and then two by three this eight by six minus Sorry, here we have plus here we'll get two by three this is equal to 
4 by 6, which is equal to 2 by 3. But we will write minus here because of this minus. Minus 2 by 3. Uh, in the middle, we have minus 8 by 3, minus 2 by 3, minus 10 by 3. Oh, it becomes plus, so it will become 6 minus 6 by 3, which is just minus 2. Understood uh, this one? If yes, you sir. Minus 8 by 3 plus 2 by 3 uh, minus 6 by 3, which is equal to minus 2. Okay, good. So here we will get. Uh, Okay, you are getting this matrix. Evaluate as one zero zero. So you will get value of this is your P zero, P one, P two. So you have one by eight here because of determinant. Okay, this will be the first column. C0, C, C1, C2 will be the first column. So we want to calculate first column. Uh, we, we cannot leave this. So remove this and this row and this column. Then this is 4 by 3. This is minus 2 by 3. Yes, just 2 by 3. And we already have plus sign here. So this is 2 by 3. So C0, C1, C2 is first column. And what it is? Minus 4 by 3. Second is minus 2 by 3. So we'll get into 4, 1 by 12, minus 1 by 12. And this is just 1 by 12. This transpose. This is your. Uh, first column. So let's see if some option is matching with this. Minus 4 by 3, 1 by 12, 1 by 12. So we are failing. Somewhere we did mistake. Determinant is minus 8. Uh, Please check. Okay. I check it. In second row, first column. Second row. Two, second row, first column. It's minus, minus two? Minus two. This is minus two. Yes, sir. Let verify it. Uh, if you want it, minus four by three. This minus, four minus four by three. This is minus two by three. Minus six by three. Minus four. minus six by three. Minus two. two. Yes. So uh, here we are getting one by four, right? Sir, minus two, minus two, three, sir. Second row, minus two, minus two, three. Can you calculate it? Minus two, minus two, three. Three. Yes, sir. Third row, two by three, two, one. Two, one. Okay. So now we can we can calculate which option is correct. We can look at it. The sign we must change the plus minus. Oh, you didn't write it with sign. Okay, fine. Okay, uh, let's see about third. Third color means P3.
is you are correct it is it will become 1 oh sorry 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 determinant is minus 8 okay so now it will become uh, plus 4 by 3 here we'll get plus 1 by 4 here we'll get minus 1 by 12 alternately positive negative sir uh -huh. Alternate terms should be multiplied with the positive and the negative. Correct. So four uh, by three plus x by four. Four by three everywhere plus x by four. So this is matching, but minus x square by two. Third coordinate is minus. see in these two options third should be minus then second should be in plus okay let's see th sign of third what it is it is in plus it 4 by 3 minus 2 by 3 is 2 by 3 it should be minus. no option matching Oh, would you understand what idea is? Right? Yes, sir. We will calculate it. Okay, you can calculate inverse of matrix from board from internet. Okay, there are tools you you can calculate directly. But currently, I don't know where I should go. So there is some sign mistake from us. We were calculating, but it seems like. Uh, right at the moment we cannot do. It might happen that all the options are uh, incorrect, but you should check it. Okay, okay. So main idea was here: how to calculate C zero, C one, C two. After getting matrix A, after all these equations, you get a lot of equation here. Five P from here, I think nine equation from there or everywhere equation. Of the matrix will be A only. Means uh, every equation is like this: A P e is equal to E one, which is just one zero zero E one transpose A. Here we have D. Same matrix D A is coming because integration way. Uh, these are the coefficients of integration, so they are not going to change. This is just E two transpose. So from here, you can calculate all C I D I and E I. So I'm not doing this, but sorry for that. I have two more questions. Someone asked me from last quiz. Let's see. They are easy, so I can do them in time. Let's see. I told you. This is fifth question from last quiz. Someone asked this. Uh, let's see. V B polynomial space of degree less than or equal to n. V B this uh, linear op linear operator. No, no, no. A linear functional. Which is actually adding all the coefficients of p. This is nothing but evaluating at one, right? This p of p x is nothing but evaluating at one. You can check it. So you have some non-zero polynomial. For example, t of x. What it will be? It is just one. So range is whole of f. T is mapped from v to r. What is rank of t? Rank t. It is one because once it is getting one, range space will be full of r because it is one dimension. 
and t is non zero so rank of t is 1 nullity of t is what nullity t is equal to dimension of v minus 1 and minus 1 what is dimension of v n plus 1 right what is basis of v 1 x x square x power n this is your basis standard basis so this is n plus 1 minus 1 it is equal to n so these both are incorrect basis of null space of these oh sorry these are not even element of null space right where it is going it is going to one it is going to one coefficients of these polynomials they are just one so sum will be one only so they are not going to zero so they are not in the null space okay it is not contained in null space of t so what about these guys these are actually space uh, these are in null space this is subset of n because sum of all coefficients in these polynomials individually is zero 1 minus 1 equal to 0 how many of these uh, these are in numbers this if this is your b then cardinality of b is n and that is our dimension of sorry dimension of null space of t means null t of t is n but we have to check if they are linearly independent then we are done okay they are actually linearly independent if you have let's say summation ti x power i minus 1 is equal to 0 this will imply summation ci x power i minus summation ci is equal to 0 but this is polynomial this is constant term this whole thing is equal to 0 x power this is a standard basis right the standard basis what it says a standard basis this set is linearly independent so all the coefficients are zero means uh, i from one to n i is equal to zero this is what we wanted so this is a linearly independent set having n elements and n is multi of t so this is actually spanning null space so this is basis okay so this was uh, fifth question we are almost having our time but let me do one more question fix the question control these are evaluated right this which question are evaluated from last week right hello am i audible yes okay okay ye sab evaluate ho chuka hai na then only i should do otherwise it is not eight key quiz ka question hum karenge what is the answer for fifth question uh, answer is b right b yes sir these are evaluated evaluate ho chuka na okay yes, so uh, okay Sixth question is this: V is space of polynomials of degree less than or equal to three. P is linear transformation B two or three given by this thing. Which of the following statement is correct? Okay, is one one. Uh, I suppose not. 
because you can take this one for this one x minus one x plus one and x minus zero which is just x this is three degree polynomial right and it belongs to v if you evaluate this polynomial at one or minus one or zero all will be zero this non zero polynomial after it is let's say p plus to p this is going to zero and i had said a theorem which is trivially verified if you see this kernel of t is just trivial if and only if t is 1 1 okay but here we, we are seeing that kernel of t is non trivial this element belongs to kernel of t non zero element so t is not 1 1 range is space of t is r2 even r2 is not subset of r3 so this is also incorrect by trivial reason okay because it is not subset of r3 okay so third option is null space of p is spanned by x2 minus 1 or this one See, this element, this p element, uh, after multiplying all this, you will get this element, right? And this belongs to kernel of p because this element is going to 0. So, first of all, uh, what is rank of p and what is kernel of t? Uh, are we getting even belonging to rank of t, uh, range space of t? Yes, because if you take p equal to uh, x plus 1 into x, then p uh, by some constant maybe, you will get p of p is equal to multiple of e1 maybe 2 3 maybe some constant non zero constant c1 into e1 so e1 is belonging to range space similarly e2 will belong to rt range space e3 will belongs to rt rt okay let's say for once doing once more we have two more minutes we can do this hmm. why e3 belongs to rt uh, you can take this for level x square minus 1 means x plus 1 uh, x minus 1 if this is your polynomial p p prime let's say then p of p prime is equal to some constant into let's say c3 e3 okay first two coordinates will become 0 i evaluate as a 1 or minus 1 it is 0 but third coordinate is less it is minus 1 in fact, it is 0, 0, minus 1. It is just minus 1. So, uh, what is rank of t? Rank of t is 3. What is kernel of t? Means null t of t. Because rank t, this all thing we discussed here implies rank t is equal to 3. This implies null t, null t, t is equal to 1. Because Dimension of V is 4, right? Correct. Degree less than equal to 3. How to null rank of T is 3? Because E1 belongs to range space, right? It is image of this P. E2, similar idea. If you take x minus 1 into x, this polynomial. This polynomial we go, go to some multiple of e2, so we can translate by constant, so we will get e2 only. So e3 is also in range space. So span of e1, e2, e3 is nothing but pura whole r3. Okay. So this map is surjective. Once it is surjective, uh, rank is 3 and 
because dimension of v is 4 what will be the kernel of t kernel of t is one dimensional right then multi theorem will say this is one dimensional and this is one element this p is uh, let's say i am writing p star this p star is one element which is non zero in one dimensional spaces this is idea that any non zero element is a basis okay so after uh, this fact this is true but this fails because this is not even in the kernel evaluated uh, zero you are not getting zero 